change. They change suddenly and they change for reasons only marginally or perhaps not at all within our control. And in this situation, the options don't feel many. We can kind of lean into the change and see if there's lessons there. We can greet the shift with anger or with resistance. We can embrace the newness or we can simply pretend that it doesn't exist. And there's not a right way or a wrong way here. We react, we respond in ways that make sense to us at that moment in time. But nevertheless, those decisions, they impact our future trajectory, even if we don't know it yet. And we all have those moments when we hear the word cancer and we realize that they're talking about us, about our body, or recognize that the pain we've been carrying around for years is a chronic disease. It just finally has a name and a diagnosis from the medical community. Maybe it's an emotional struggle, something we've walked through for a long time, from which, if we're lucky, we're now freed. And there's also rapid shifts on the positive side, of course. Finding a love, adopting a baby or bringing a baby into the world, creating a circle of friends that feel like family, or maybe reconciling the family long distance. And I know with assurance that every one of us has experienced these sort of events, even if it's not one of the ones that I've listed. And in those moments, we react. Maybe we take a deep breath or feel numb. Maybe we pray to that which we understand as spirit, or maybe we seek the comfort of beloved. But no matter how we respond, we're changed. And I don't need to tell you that that's been true this past year. And even as we emerge from this time of pandemic, it will continue to be so in many ways. Housing is all but unaffordable for so many right now. Basic goods cost more than they have in recent memory. And even while we kind of tiptoe back into the world, large parts of the world are still very much in the midst of this pandemic. So the world is changing still in some unexpected ways. One of the things that is, has been noticed is that people are leaving jobs in droves, stable jobs. Maybe they have different options or they wanna commit their lives to different values. Many um, millennials and those in Generation Y and Generation Z they're also becoming established as these political forces of change evermore. So many of us have rethought our priorities, placing connection over work, depth over simple distraction. And we won't forget anytime soon what it's like to not be able to hug those we love. But the difference between some of the individual moments of great shift that we've experienced and now is that this is a communal change. It isn't just your life or my life that's been changed. It's all of our lives and it's our shared life. And so the question, of course, is what we do with that change. I think you know me well enough by now to know that I don't spend a whole lot of time planning on what's gonna happen a year or two or three from now. I tend to follow my heart and my gut along with a whole lot of conversation to guide myself. But I think more is needed here. It's been a long while since this congregation looked at its mission and purpose and asked, who do we wanna be? How? do we want to be? 
And I wonder if the process of working that through, of finding your way to a shared outcome might be a useful exercise. If it might sharpen our shared focus to undertake an exercise of communal self-reflection. What would change if we pause and respond meaningfully to this need to find a new normal? to consider what elicits the best in all of us. And you have 30 years of history, I think it's 30 this year, years of history behind you as a congregation. And it's a good history, but you're more than that history. There's this whole next phase that can be so much more than just getting us back together in person. And yes, we all crave that, but there's more. There's the gift of self-direction, a gift fairly unique to Unitarian Universalism. Our congregation polity, our governance says, this is your congregation, this is your future that you're building together. And it is you who has agency, the ability to determine together thoughtfully, this is the path we want to seek together. And that's the invitation this week. Start those conversations. And I know some of you have already in small groups and council meetings and elsewhere, and begin to envision the next phase of this future. I hope, and I assume that it's, we can find a new compelling path forward, one based in love, held in our values, in speaking to the very core of our hearts. So may you feel held in the love of community this week and all weeks as the journey leads us forward to changes that we cannot yet foresee. Blessed be.